Welcome back. Domain 2 Technologies and Tools Part 2.6 Implement Secure Protocol Secure Protocols The network infrastructure is subject to myriad internal and external attacks through service protocols and open ports. Older protocols that are still in use might leave the network vulnerable. So protocols such as simple network management protocol and domain name service that were developed a long time ago and have been widely deployed can pose uh, security risks too. You must understand how to properly secure these protocols, especially if the network has been in existence for a while and newer or more, more secure versions have been developed. So these sections, uh, we are going to see that how, how we can understand how to use the proper network inf implement, uh, implementations of secure protocols to protect and mitigate threat against network infrastructures. So secure protocols web. Secure web protocols is a basic uh, web connectivity using HTTP uh, occurs over TCP port 80. So no security is provided against the interceptions of trans uh, translated data sent in clear text. So web protocol security is uh, usually implemented at two layers, transport layers and application layers. So a more, a more secure way to conduct web communication is involved using SSL transport protocols operating on port 443. So which create an encrypted pipe through which HTTP traffic can be conducted securely to differentiate a, a call to port 80. So HTTP over SSL call on port 443 using HTTPS or URL port designator. HTTPS uh, was originally created by the Net Netscap corporations. It used a 40-bit RC4 stream encryption algorithms to establish to secure connection and capsulations data transfer between the client and web server. However, it can also support the use of X509 digital certifications to allow the user to authenticate uh, the sender. So now 256 256 bit encryption keys have become the accepted level of secure connectivity for online banking and electronics com commerce transactions. So SSL is a the la latest version is a 3.0. So this in this protocol occurs between HTTP applications level and then TCP transport layer of uh, internet communications. So millions of websites use SSL to protect their online transaction with their customers. SSL is public key based security protocol that internet services and clients use authentication message integrity and confidentiality. The SSL process use certification for authentications and encryption for message integrations and confidentiality. SSL establish a stateful connections in which both ends set, uh, set up and main, maintain information about the session itself during it live. So this is different from stateless connections in which no prior connection has been set up the SSL stateful connection is negotiated by handshaking procedures between client and server so during the handshake the clients and server exchange the specific specifications for cipher that will be used for the sessions SSL communicates using the asymmetric key which is which a uh, cipher uh, strength of 40 or 128 bits so normally the SSL uh, works by establishing a secure uh, a channel using a public key infrastructure, the so PKI we call. So this is eliminate the vast majority of attacks such as uh, se uh, session hijack and information theft. As a general SSL is not a flexible as IPsec from an application perspective but is more flexible for access from an any locations. Organization must determine the usage recommend for each classes of users and then decide on the best approach. So the TLS so in the TLS has a two layers from the, the current version you know based on the SSL uh, 3.4 so under the asymmetric key encapsulations is the transport layers is a uh, uh, based on the Netscape secure socket layers so 3.4 so this TLS, uh, TL, TLS is provide encryption using stronger encryption methods such as DES. So it can work without encryption algorithm. So if it is designed for authentication only, SSL and TLS transport are similar but not entirely interoperable. 
So TLS also provide confidentiality and data integrity. So it, it the TLS has uh, two layers of operations: TLS record protocol, TLS handshake protocol. So the TLS hand, uh, record protocols allows the client and server to communicate using some uh, form of encryption algorithms. Uh, TLS handshake protocols allows that the client and server to authenticate one another and e exchange encryption key to be used during the session. So and then HTTPS as we talk about earlier. So then DNSSEC meaning the uh, domain name secure security. So D DNS was originally designed as an open protocol. So in the DNS servers are organized in hierarchy at the top level of hierarchy. So root server stores the complete database of internet domain names and their corresponding IP address. So different different types of DNS servers exist. The, the most common type follows. So one is authoritative authoritative servers and the second one is a catchy of recursive servers. The first one, authoritative servers. The, the servers are definitive for particular domains and provide information about only those domains. An authoritative only name server return answer to queries about just the domain names that have been specifically configured. The second one is a catchy of recursive servers. This server use recursion to re resolve a given name starting with the DNS root through to authoritative name server of the query domain. The term SSL and TLS are often um, interchangeable and are denoted as SSL TLS except when there is a need to refer to one of the protocols separately. So DNS doesn't check for credential before accepting an answer. So attacker exploit these basic vulnerabilities. So an attacker can cause DNS possible by de delegating a false name to the domain servers and providing a false address for the server. So to prevent this form this this from happening, so the, the DNS security extension DNSSEC protocol was developed. So DNSSEC protect against such an attack by providing a validation path for records. Sometimes the exam questions they ask so DNS sec uh, doesn't um, encrypt the data. So we need to explain this. Uh, it it provides a way to validate the uh, address of a site by using a sequence of digital signature through the DNS hierarchy. So all individual domain level are in control of their own signature uh, generate keys. So this is how validation validations is done through the use of key and signatures. To properly validate the path, DNSSEC must implement at each domain level. The higher organization level sign the key of lower domain level. So using the domain, let's say uh, www.google.com as an example, so the root level sign the dot org key. So which means and and the dot org level signs the Google dot org key. So DSEC follows the chain of trust from the lowest level domain to the top level domain, validating the key at each level along along the way. SSH secure shell. So as a, as a more secure replacement for the common com common command line terminal utility, telnet. The SSH utility establishes a session between the client and host computer using an authenticated and encrypted connection. SSH requir requires encryption of all data, including the log uh, login portions. SSH uses the asymmetric RSA cryptographic method to provide both connection and authentication. 
So data encryption is accomplished using one of the following algorithm. So one is uh, international data encryption algorithm idea. So the second one is a follow for, uh, Blowfish. Third one is a DES. Fourth one is a 3DES triple data encryption standard. So idea is the first one. So international data encryption algorithm. So the default encryption algorithm used by SSH which uses a 128-bit system uh, symmetry key block cipher. Blowfish. A symmetric encryption algorithm using a variable 32 to 448-bit 448-bit secret key. Data encryption standard. A symmetric key encryption algorithm using a random key selected from a large number of shared key. Most forms of the algorithm cannot be used in product means of uh, for export from the US. Triple data encryption data standard. A systematic uh, a symmetric key al encryption algorithm that dramatically improves upon the DES by using DES algorithm three times with three distinct keys. So using SSH helps guard against attacks such as eavesdropping, man-in-middle attacks and spoofing. So attempts, attempts to spoof the identify of either side of communication can be thwarted because each packet is encrypted using a key known only by the local and remote system. So secure email, secure multipurpose internet mail extension, secure MIMI. So we can also say like that. So the MIMI protocol extend, extended the capability of original SMTP to allow the inclusions of non-textual uh, data within the email message. Embedding data with within an email message is an easy way to send message, send image, audio and video file and many other types of non-ASCII tests. To provide secure method of transmissions, the secure multipurpose in, uh, internet mail extension secure MIMI protocol was developed. So secure MIMI is widely accepted technology for sending digital signed and encrypted message that provide authentications message integrity and non repudiations so secure mimi is based on the uh, the following three so one is asymmetric uh, asymmetric cryptographic using the following algorithm rsa uh, dsa or elliptic curve the second one is a symmetric uh, cryptographic using advanced encryption standard AES. Third one is a cryptographic message standard that provides the underlying key security. So the f for more details information on how symmetric and then asymmetric cryptographic works you can also just google it the uh, uh, cryptographic and PK uh, you know so you can use the keyword how does it work so when uh, uh, secure mimi is used the secure email so the, the you you will get a more idea about this so th after that internal email pop pop3 s3 so the port used by secure version of protocol differ uh, a bit uh, from the port used by unsecured protocol so pop3 communications over uh, port number 110 uh, while pop3s uses port 995 so imap communicates over the port 143 so while imaps use uh, port 993 so many sites uh, disable imap and pop3 completely forcing to use the ssls dls encryption connections so this one is FTP so FTP is a F FTP passes the username and password in plain text form so attacker can thus use packet sniffing on the uh, 
network traffic to read the read these values and possible use them to gain unauthorized access to the server ftp ftps also known as ftp secure and ftp ssl is a ftp extensions that add support for tls and ssls ftps supports channels encryptions as defined in rfc 2228 so with ftps data transfer takes place so that both parties can authenticate each other it also prevents a eavesdropping tampering and forgery on the message exchanged ftps includes full support for the tls and ssls cryptographic protocols include the use of server side public key authentications certifications and client side authentication certifications in addition ftps supports comp uh, compatibility ci ciphers includes in aes rc4 rc2 triple des and des it supports the hash functions such a uh, sha1 md5 md4 md2 so secure variations of the ftp protocol ensure that data cannot be intercepted during the transfers and allow the use of more secure transfers of user access credentials during ftp log logon so secure uh, ftp or secure uh, sftp or secure ftp is a program that uses ssh to transfer files so unlike standard ftp it's encrypted both command and the data preventing password and sensitive information from being transmitted in the clear over the network it is functionality similar to ftp but it uses a different protocol so therefore standard ftp clients cannot talk to sftp server so nor can ftp server connect to the client that support only sftp so a yeah, more secure version this uh, there is the exam sometimes they ask the exam so i have to remember this the definition like a more secure version of ftp is sftp has been developed that include ssl and encapsulation so this version is referred to ftp over ssh it uses the secure shell uh, ssh uh, tcp over 32 so don't confuse with the sftp with the ftps so ftps uses more than one port and can be either implicit or ex explicit so ftps uses tcp port 990 for command and passive port for data ftps uses tcp port 21 for commands and passive port for data either sftp or ftps protocol can be used in enterprise network SRTP so SRTP is a secure voice video transmissions uh, voice and video calls established with the session initiator protocols and data is transmitted with the retailer transfer protocol so the retailer sorry real-time transport real-time transport protocol is used for video and audio communication on IP network as with many of other protocol discussed previously so the 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 design is inherently insecure allowing for eavesdropping and communication interception support for RTP encryption in secure provide gateway is lacking because of inherent designs it is not possible to provide privacy and security for calls that go over the public switch telephone network so the most common use of RTP is VoIP. So VoIP network communication are subject to the same attack to other as others internet communications method. SRTP, the Secure Real Time Transport Protocol or Secure RTP, is an extension to RTP that incorporates enhanced security features. As the RTP, it is intend, intended particular for voice over IP. Or video network communications so the ex exam question sometimes remember the definitions is a secure RTP is used to used to protect warp traffic because when it's used with header comparison sorry compressions 
IP quality of services doesn't suffer SRTP encrypts RTP data for unicast and multicast applications. So this adds confidentiality, message authentications and reply replay protections to the communications exchange. So UDP is still used as RTP transfer protocol. So but keys are exchanged to enable encryption similar to HTTPS process used for secure webmail. And then LDAPs. So LDAPs is a lightweight directory access protocol. is a is a directory service protocol for use on use on IP networks. So by default, LDAP traffic is unsecured. That is, attack can use network monitoring program to view LDAP traffic. So including Active Directory associate service that use LDAP to authenticate. Encryption is recommended with LDAP is used over a network that is not secure. So LDAP over SSL is method to secure lightweight directory access protocol by enabling communication over SSL TLS. So as with web, as with the web uh, mail or FTP protocol, SSL TLS established an encryption panel to pro, uh, prevent traffic from being read. So with LDAPs, the encrypt tunnel occur between LDAP clients and Windows AD do main control, I mean the domain control. So this is a pro this is a process for LDAP communication. So one is an LDAP session is started between a client and LDAP server commonly referred to as directory system agent on default port 636. The global catalog is accessed via three uh, three two six nine. So the server sends a client operation request response. The variation, so the various requests a client can make include bind. So next, SNMPv3. SNMPv3 is focused on performance more than security. One improvement was that implement implementation of the man, message direct algorithm MD5 for authentication between the server and the agents. SNMPv2 didn't provide a way to authenticate the source of management message nor did it provide encryptions. The plain text password could still be sniffed from network traffic and was subjected to replay attacks. So SNM SNMPv3 attempts to address the deficiencies in SNM SNMPv2 by defining a overall SNMPs at architectures that included a set of security capability. So SNMP changes the structure to include access controls, authentication and privacy. SNMPv3 uses the same port as SNMPv1 and SNMPv2. So UDP port 161 is required for pooling and 162 is required for notification. So SNM SNMP SNMPv3 can also run over TCP. So you can also Google it to mo uh, to know more about the SNMP one, two, three, the architecture. So you will get a more clear idea. So use case network address allocations, allocating IP address. So dynamic host control protocol assign internal IP address uh, uses network subnet to segregate uh, multi multiple hosts and uh, control network traffic so there is a class A class B class C so the class A uh, is a big network they're using the class B the small net, uh, small network so class D is a home network you know so uh, we don't want to go deeper so so this is a, a classification and the and the and the network so the IP address we are using so the next is use cases type uh, synchronizations NTP UDP protocol used to synchronize time based on the autom atomic clock so NTP servers are redundant and secure Use cases, subscription services, SaaS, software as a services, cloud emails like uh, Google Mail and Microsoft Office 365 network defenses, 
firewall IDPS of what we uh, uh, seen before and then web application filterings and then antivirus malware detections and patching exam preparations with this protocol each managed device has a software agents reporting configuring configurations settings and alerts to your central management servers answer SNMPV3 A answer is A the second one is so this is a client based protocol used for securing email so the most common use cases for this protocol is securing internet client message answer B secure BIMI okay that's it guys uh, for this video so please subscribe my channel uh, press the bell button get more uh, more updates so please share the video if you like so thank you so much Bye-bye.